In today's video, we talk about daily undulating periodization. today at Powerhouse Gym with my buddy Jason Parisi. Jason's been a client of mine for going on two years now and um, he's done a couple powerlifting meets at this point. And so what we're doing is called daily undulating periodization where I program his squat bench and deadlift based on undulating the, the intensity each time he trains. So what's cool is Jason came up to Tampa, he's from Sarasota, so about an hour and a half away. So he came up today for his AMRAP sets. So what we do occasionally with a model like this is we do what's called AMRAPs or as many reps as possible. It's basically to gauge progress. The goal is not to do as many reps as possible and get hurt or go past failure. It is literally just to gauge progress for where he's at for the next block of training. So yeah, so what we're gonna watch Jason do today is I believe he has uh, five sets of six, and then the final set is gonna be a set for him wrap, as many reps as possible. Based on how many he gets there, I'll know what to program for the next training block. So we'll get a little bit more in depth with how daily undulating periodization works next to the video but first let's watch Jason squat he's a very tall lanky limber guy so he's got a very unique squat form and we've experimented with lots of different ways it's just what works for him so watch the set Giving you my pain, take a listen to the record and tell me I'm insane with the way that I was raised. I swear that I've been trained, prepared to be alone. I pray that I can atone. I've been looking for the meaning of life with the voice in my head, trying to get it all right. I can never get the light when I felt that I needed it. Proceeded with my genius, conceiving it to mean it. So the basics of daily undulating periodization basically means that every time you come in the gym, you're undulating your intensity. So intensity refers to your one rep max. So 100% of your one rep max would be 100%, meaning that's all you can do, one rep. So what we're doing is we're working sub-maximal, but what we'll do is we'll work within a range between 65% up to around 90% of his one rep max for training depending on what his goals are. Right now he's not really close to a powerlifting meet, so we're not gonna be focusing too close to that 90% range. Uh, we won't go below 65% of his one rep max because research has shown that that doesn't have a lot of carryover as far as strength goes. Lifting heavy for powerlifting is a different skill than lifting for bodybuilding, okay? Because the closer you get to your one rep max, the more is involved in actually completing that lift. It's not just about strength. It's about neural adaptations, it's about <laughs> The patterns, it's a skill, the squat is a skill. So let's watch him do his second set and uh, we're gonna finish off with his AMRAP set here in a minute. One at a time. Big brace. Better. 
All right, guys, so now a lot of people are going to ask me about Jason's squat form because it's very unique. And I think if you come from a background where you don't actually understand biomechanics or leverages, you might think that's terrible squat form. Horrible. Well, let's talk about it. How long have you been squatting with high frequency, two to three times a week? Uh, a couple years. How three many years. times have you had like a serious injury? Zero. Zero. So I know it's going to seem strange. I also want to reiterate, don't take my word for it. You attended a camp last year yep. with Lane Norton, Matt Gary, Susie Hartwig Gary, uh, Dr. Mike Zordos, yep. all saw you squat. Yep. Did they change anything? Um, Torque tweaked something like yeah. a little bit. It was like feet, yeah. an inch or two, something like that. So those are some of the most experienced, highest level squatting powerlifting coaches in the world worked with Jason. So don't take my word for it. I figured we'd just throw that in there because I know people are going to question. Jason's a very tall guy with very unique leverages, but he makes the most of them and he stays healthy. So that's really what what matters most. Yep. I'm no pro, but just listen to what the guys tell me that are pro. Exactly. So one at a time. Go. On good speed. Good time. Good. Reset. Big air. One more, one more good one. Big air. That's it. Rack it, rack it. Nope, nope, nope. All right. See, see. Make a liar out of me. Big air. Come on. What's that belt? Yes, sir. Stand it up. There we go. All right. So Jason just crushed his AMRAP on squats. And so what are we doing? We're gonna deadlift. Why do we squat and deadlift on the same day? Because Jason is a powerlifter, he's training for a powerlifting meet. You have to do all the lifts on the same day. So what we want to do is specialize. We want to train specifically for the event. So he's going to be doing his deadlift sets, and it's going to consist of an AMRAP at the end. So we'll get a little bit of him warming up, and uh, you'll see that Jason is a extreme sumo. He's got very long arms. So you'll see the difference between conventional and sumo from yesterday's video. So show him how to do it. All right. Alright guys, so we've moved on to the deadlift and usually Jason will bench before he deadlifts. So after you squat and you go straight to the deadlift, obviously the lower body is fatigued. You saw how Jason squats. He recruits a lot of his uh, posterior chain. So when he transitioned to the deadlift today, he's just not feeling it. So we're not going to force him to do an AMRAP set. And after working with Jason for two years, he knows himself well, I know his body. Uh, there's no reason to force an AMRAP. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the volume a little bit today not worry about an AMRAP set, and then we're going to look at, uh, you know, possibly adding an AMRAP in later in the week. Again, this is kind of auto-regulation based on his ability to recover and my ability to coach, and the nice thing about having him in town for an AMRAP set like this is we know better um, than to risk injury. So we're just going to get the volume in for today. I think we're going to end up doing a couple sets of five and call it a day, and then we'll look at uh, adjusting the program based on that because his training volume is getting up there. And uh, he actually hit a, I don't know if it was a PR, but he actually outperformed his um, AMRAP today by a rep. So he's definitely going to be going up in weight in the squat based on his performance. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get a few more reps on film. But I just want to make sure Jason's feeling good for the next block. 
and um, maybe Chad and I will discuss a little bit about that on the ride home. All right, guys, so we're back at the house after the training session with Jason, and I just wanted to uh, give some final thoughts on daily undulating periodization, periodization, and kind of what it all means. So I'm going to do a video later on with Dr. Bill Campbell, specifically on the topic of periodization, and explain that in full detail. What daily undulating periodization is basically a new training model that has uh, become popular in the last couple years, and the idea is that every time you step in the gym, you're undulating your intensity. This doesn't mean that you have to train the same body part multiple times per week. This means you can undulate it each time you train once a week, twice a week, three times a week. It's kind of become popularized or familiar with um, higher frequency training, like as in three days a week. And so what you get into there is you're talking about maximum recoverable volume and, and just how much that is. And so you're getting to some high level training stuff. And what I don't want it to get too far away from is understanding like all of these things have a specific niche, right? So when we're talking about daily undulating periodization, max recoverable volume and power lifting, we're talking about taking power lifters and putting them in a position to be the best that they can possibly be. And for, for some of them, it requires a lot of volume of training, right? Um, you know, frequency of three, four times per week lifting. And I think for, for most of us, that's really not necessary. So what I'm very careful of is when I'm programming for nonlinear periodization or daily undulating periodization or auto regulation or even linear periodization or macro cycles and, and meso cycles, micro cycles, whatever it may be is paying attention to the individual person. Um, and the most important thing is health and well-being and enjoyment and recovering. Jason loves what he's doing and he's been doing this for a while. And you know, what I'm, what I'm very careful of is doing a lot of tapering with him. So I make sure he has weeks where his frequency is lower, his volume is lower, he's recovering, he's feeling good. Um, but so it's, it's all about paying attention to the individual. And I just wanted to put that out there. I don't want to feel like I'm preaching DUP is better than anything else. It's gotten really trendy. Um, but there's plenty of ways to train from, from the bro split to the push pull to fat to all these kind of training programs out there. And so I can discuss any type of training program you guys want if you want to hear my feedback on that. But this video was just, you know, Jason was in town doing his stuff and I thought it'd be a good example. And so, yeah, we discussed it with Jason. So I thought that would be um, valuable for you guys. So if you have any questions or comments about this, let me know. But I am going to be doing a video on periodization with Dr. Bill Campbell in the near future. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Yeah,